We're live. Isn't that exciting? Yay. Yes. Yay. Um, All right. So for anyone who's listening, I'm, I'm Dan. I work in admissions. I'm a Tufts graduate, and we have uh, three students here. And basically, for those of you who can't visit for Jumbo Days, or for those of you who did visit for Jumbo Days but didn't get enough of this, um, we're hosting a conversation about, in this case, academics. We're going to do a series of these. They're going to be on different topics, things like you know Boston and what life is like, social life on Tufts. But today's conversation, this conversation, is going to be about academic life here on campus. We have three students across three different class years in different areas of the curriculum in different places on campus here to talk to you about kind of what that experience has been like. And so I'm going to let them introduce themselves now. Hi, um, I'm Shauna. I'm a junior. I'm studying computer science, and I also have a minor in film with an emphasis on documentaries. I actually thought I was going to be an international relations major, but I'll get into that a little bit later. I'm from Los Angeles, California, so I couldn't come to Jumbo Days either. And right now, I am sitting in my off-campus house. Awesome. Hey, guys. Oh, go, go, go. Go. go ahead. Hey, guys. My name is Jordan. I'm a freshman. I came to Tufts having no idea what I wanted to study. But after about a year now, I'm pretty sure that I want to major in psychology and minor in philosophy. All right, and my name's also Jordan. I'm a sophomore here at Tufts. I'm from outside of Philadelphia, and I'm majoring in chemistry. And I'm actually sitting right outside the campus center, so sorry if it gets a little loud, but it's much quieter than inside with all these Jumbo Days kids running around. And you guys are getting a little, a little view into my dorm as well. Jordan, show or both Jordan, show us around just a little bit. Yeah, you can get a nice view of my very messy dorm. Got a nice window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we keep it clean in here. All right. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, and so let, let's get started. I mean, you're you're you know three different class years, and so you're in kind of different places in your academic journey. One of you sort of figuring out what you want to do, but not 100% sure. You know, Sean, on the other end, knows what you're doing, but got there on a really different path. How, how do you decide what you think you want to do? Um, so I actually can talk about my switch into computer science, because it was something I never expected to study. Um, when I came to Tufts as a freshman, I, when I was signing up for classes, I had just heard these legendary stories about this professor, Ben Hescott, and how you have to take his class. It's the most incredible class you will ever take in your entire life at Tufts. So I said, OK, this can't be too bad. I'll try out this computer science thing. Just absolutely loved the class, fell in love with the subject, thought, OK, maybe, maybe I'll minor in this. This is kind of cool. Um, and just kept taking classes in it, really, really enjoyed it, fell into the field, and have just stayed there ever since. Yeah, my, my story is kind of similar to Shauna's, actually. I, uh, I came in with some ideas, but I heard, like, oh, this professor in psychology, uh, Sam Summers, is really incredible. And so mm -hmm. I took this class this semester, social psychology, and I've been very hooked by, by psychology ever since. And I've been, I've been studying, you know, just looking into different uh, concentrations of psychology ever since, like anything I can get my hands on. Um, and then as for philosophy, it's kind of an interesting story, actually. Um, I wanted to get my math requirement out of the way, um, my math distribution requirement. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll take logic, like it's a math credit. And that got me really interested in philosophy. And I'm also taking another philosophy class as well. And uh, between the two, I was just like, this is really interesting and I really want to continue. Yeah, for me, I did something in high school called the IB, the International Baccalaureate Program. And so I did basically two years of chemistry with that, uh, 11th and 12th grade. It was like really intense and it was really fun. And I had an awesome teacher. And that, like, my awesome teacher is pretty much kind of what, I guess, pushed me into chemistry. So I went here, and there's some, like, intro chem courses. Uh, that was, like, Chem 1 and Chem 2, but there's also an honors version, which is a lot smaller, like 40 kids, which compared to the 200-person intro classes, like, big intro classes, is really cool with an incredible professor. And I got, it was, it was, it was incredible because not only was she really good at explaining different concepts, but once a week, instead of a lecture on whatever we were doing, like wave functions or like acid-based chemistry or whatever, she brought in a professor or a grad student from the chem or related departments to talk about their current or past research, which was so cool. So we got all this exposure to like what you can do in the field of chemistry or biochemistry or physical chemistry or chemical engineering, whatever, what people are doing on campus, different paths you can take. Some people had gone into like you know, the business world first, or startups before coming here, 
and also it was a great way to get involved in research. I ended up, I, I work in a chem lab now, and I started as a freshman, second semester, freshman year, working in a lab because I just got that exposure and went and talked to the professor. So I've had a great time with that. So I'm interested in lots of other things like psych and I, you know, psych and history and lots of things, but I'm, I kind of came in thinking I would be a chem major, and that's where I am. Where did yeah. Oh, sorry. Started in the in the research, like when you say you got you're doing research with your professor. I mean, how did you fall into that? Um, so okay, so like I said, there are these lectures. So, um, I literally after I okay, so like a lot of the lectures are about biology and stuff, and I really I'm thinking bio class now. I haven't taken one since ninth grade, so I was more interested in things that weren't biological at that point. And so she spoke, and she started by talking about water, and she said, hey there is a huge fresh water problem in the world. There are almost a billion people who don't have reliable access to clean fresh water every day. And that's a huge problem from diseases to, well, diseases especially, and but like, you need water to live. Like, the number one thing you need to live. And I'm also really interested in public health, and I took this intro to community health class last year, and it just blew my mind. And so I was like, wow, this is really tying together a lot of things I'm interested in, like chemistry and public health and water issues. And so I literally, after her lecture, and she ended up talking about the project, like the project that I work on in her lab was what she talked about, and it's uh, actually a photocatalyst for water purification using sunlight and this like a material that's actually made like a lot. It's in your sunscreen, it's in your skim milk. It's like crazy how prevalent it is, and you don't know about it. But like, um, I just went up to her after class and I said, "Hey, that was really cool. I'm really interested in this. I'd love to meet with you another time to." to talk about this more. So I emailed her, I set up a meeting, and I ended up at the end of the meeting asking her if she had any space in her lab, I would love to re do research with her, and it was also kind of a right time, right place kind of thing, and that like, she didn't have any undergrads working on that project, they just like graduated the past year, and so like, it worked out, but I'd say probably like half of that small chem class, like there were 40 of us, I'd say probably at least half of us, we're doing research by the end of the year. It was it was awesome. Just because of the exposure we had, we all got so excited about it. Um, but that's my knowledge about like research in the chem and chemical engineering fields. But it, it's really fun. I love it, and I plan on working there for the rest of my time at Tufts. And then, um, are any of you, are any of the others of you, doing things kind of outside of class that relate back to what you do inside the classroom? Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Something that I really love about computer science is that it's a field that's applicable to so many different things. And so I've been able to take my computer science skills and use them to do things that are applicable to international relations, that are applicable to all kinds of global issues. And so um, I'm really involved in something at Tufts called the Institute for Global Leadership, which is awesome. I highly, highly, highly recommend getting involved with it. Um, and last year, I did a program that was kind of similar to Jordan's interest in health. I did a program that was looking at more of the policy side of global health issues, and through that, someone came and spoke at it about technology and health and the intersection between them, and I kind of thought to myself, oh, that's really cool. I'm really interested in both of those things. So I sent them an email. That turned into me doing an internship in Kenya last summer. And so people will come and speak at Tufts about things, and you can think to yourself, oh, wow, that sounds awesome, and then they can just turn into these unbelievable opportunities that you can't even believe are happening. Mm -hmm. So... Um, yeah, so I did this internship where I was working on the technical side of a map that was taking sanitation data from a slum and making it into a tool that NGOs can use to solve different sanitation problems there, which is pretty cool. That's so, so cool. <clears throat> that sounds awesome. really cool. It was the coolest experience ever. And Tufts also paid for it, so I got to go for free, so that was pretty cool. So, the free IGL, international travel, yeah. pretty awesome. They have so much. They, they love sending people places. Like, yeah. I, I had a friend who went to Tanzania last summer through a grant that she applied to with the NGL, just, and, and IGL, I can't speak. But, like, I don't even remember what she was doing exactly, but she was working with an NG, a, a non-government organization, and, like, she had a blast, and it was paid for by the IGL because she had the passion and, and the idea, and, like, the IGL loves that. And you can I, also so cool. take interests from across all these different fields and put them together. And that's so cool that you can pursue all these different multidisciplinary things, and they yeah. just, it's, it's awesome. It's so cool. That's super cool. As for me, I've been dabbling a little bit by, like, uh, outside of class, going to the philosophy club, where you get to just hang out, like, talk um, about some philosophical concepts with some professors, some grad students. Really cool discussion. Free pizza. Um, and then a very, another very minor thing, but a lot of fun is um, for my psychology class that I'm currently taking, we write a blog um, as part of our assessment, 
And so you just sort of, like, you go through your, your regular life, and just about every day, I would say, I notice things that apply to what I've been learning in my psychology class. And then I'll just, like, open up my computer and type up, like, I just noticed that this thing completely applies. And then the really cool thing is that oftentimes it'll, there will be, like, an intersection of philosophy and psychology. And I'll get to write about that and say, like, these are all the things I've learned that are changing the ways that I'm seeing everyday life here. I love when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, it, it really gives you a lot of meaning when you realize that, that things that you're learning in seemingly different departments are relating to each other. Um, just, for example, talking about, like, free will. Like, in psychology, we'll discuss, like, is altruism um, a real... A real um, a real thing. Um, and then the next day in philosophy, we'll discuss it again, but from a more philosophical approach, like, could it be true? And then objections to that argument, and then, like, different responses. So really getting, like, several different aspects to different topics makes you feel uh, that you're gaining a sort of, like, very, very true knowledge of it. Yeah, and, 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 were, you, were you thinking oh, about when you oh, got something that is super awesome about Tufts, too, is that you have the ability to come in and just take classes from all different departments. You could have mm -hmm. no interest in anthropology at all, but think that, oh, this anthropology class sounds super cool. I'll just take a class in it. And it could turn into something that you end up pursuing. It could be a class that is really, really awesome. It just makes you think about the world differently. And that's mm -hmm. something that's super cool about Tufts and about liberal arts education in general, is that you have those kinds of opportunities here. Yeah, I've been taking notes in some of my classes using using the language I've learned in logic, which is super cool. Um, and I've been like sometimes I'll use like psychological ideas to inspire my philosophy essays. Wait, what what do you mean when you say using like language from logic to take notes? Like, what does that actually look like? Yeah, so so for logic basically gives you a basic set of of uh, of structures such as like if I go to the beach, then I'll wear a bathing suit or I will, wear, I will wear a bathing suit if and only if I go to the beach. And so structures like that are pretty important in understanding different concepts, and especially in philosophy, which is why logic is in the philosophy department. Um, my, my political philosophy professor will say something like, the state is justified if and only if um, everyone consents to it. And so like he's, he's using a lot of words, but with the, the language that I've learned in logic, I get to shorthand that, um, which is really cool because that's the way that, that logic is supposed to apply. It's, it's also funny that you talk about kind of conditional logic in your logic class because that's also a really important component of computer science where you have kind of, I'll get a little technical for a second, um, you have an if statement and an else statement and then the program does a different thing based on the state of the program. Um, and so, just now I'll stop being technical, but um, basically I, I will find those kind of sprinkled throughout my notes in classes that are totally not related to computer science at all, just mm -hmm. because it's such an easy way to organize your thinking, and so I just I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. It's the beauty of a liberal arts education, definitely. So yeah, but talking about liberal arts real fast, sorry, when I was, uh, when I was applying to Tufts, I, wanted, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do the engineering or uh, liberal arts school, and I ended up applying to liberal arts because I talked a lot about, like, I talked to my, like, admissions counselor, not an admissions counselor, but, like, guidance counselor in high school, and my parents, a lot of people, um, and I realized that I wanted to be able to take a lot of different things and see a lot of, like, from completely different fields, from history to, like, to community health, to chemistry, to computer science, um, just to be able to get that broad range of of different disciplines, everything, even from like Spanish. Like I, I'm trying to learn. I started in Spanish one here. Like I took Latin in high school, and I've had incredible professors, and I've had such a good time. And I really, I think it's cool that, hey, look, I'm able to try and like take Spanish every semester, and also take a bunch of chem classes, and also take community health or take dance classes. And I love that aspect of. Um, the liberal arts education. I love the distribution requirements, the language requirements. That was one of the, actually the main reasons I came here because it makes it so everyone knows a lot about lots of different things. Totally. Yeah, I mean, just to talk about the language requirement for a second, I took German to fill my language requirement. Hello? In classes, <laughs> which was a little intimidating, to be honest, at first, but it, you get, you, you ease into it, and it ends up being fine, and to come back and say that I am basically fluent in German at this point is really, really cool. Did you know um, German I, before I mean, you started? What's that? 
you want to, did you know any German before you started, or have you gone to fluent from basic? I, I started in German one at Tufts, just to speak to the strength of the, the German department also. I had taken it for two years at Tufts, and when I got to my abroad program, I placed into a level of German that people had been taking it for like five to six years, so that was pretty <laughs> ridiculous. But basically, the Tufts language departments are really, really, really awesome. Um, I have a friend who has taken Arabic for two years. Actually, now she's taken it for three years here. And last summer, she traveled to Oman to uh, further her Arabic studies and is very, very good at Arabic. So that, that's pretty awesome, too. And you can just, I think you can study all, a, a really big variety of languages here. Awesome. Um, so I want to ask a couple of, uh, I guess, practical questions now. To be honest, I find these questions a little less exciting, but I also know that these are things that are like on prospective students' minds, so I'm just going to ask. Um, so I'll, I'll start with the, our first year student. Um, what are you taking this semester and how large is each, is each class? Sure. So it definitely varies by the class. Um, my political philosophy class, Justice, Equality, and Liberty with David Denby, is about 60 people. And then we have a recitation once a week with about uh, 15 to 20. Um, I'm also taking Logic, which is equally about 60 people with uh, Susan Rusinoff, which is a great class. Um, and we have four TAs in that class, so you can also get plenty of time with them. Um, I'm taking Plants and Humanity, which is a really popular class for, for non-science majors, so that one is bigger, about 150. Um, and then I'm also taking Positive Psychology, which is one of the more... Uh, sorry, I'm taking social psychology uh, with Sam Summers, and that's one of the more uh, more intro level classes. So that one is also very popular. It's about 200. And Jordan, how typical would you say that is for a first year student? I would say uh, you know you can expect some classes of 100 to 200. 200 is kind of uncommon, but um, you can also expect like a lot of classes of more 60 especially in like the foreign languages when I was taking Spanish first semester, that's like 15. Um, so a range, but I mean as a, as a freshman you definitely will have some bigger classes and then it, it gets smaller as you go on. And then other Jordan, what are you taking this semester? How large are your classes? Hey, so okay, I'm taking uh, bio in, like a big intro bio class called Bio 14 and that's like 230 people. I'd say it's one of the biggest classes on campus. Um, I'm taking uh, organic chemistry second semester, which is about 55 people, and I'm also taking physics two, which is probably 150 to 200 people. But um, so those are like bigger science classes that a lot of um, like pre meds, those big like bio people take. So um, the, you can see why those are pretty big. I'm also in Spanish four; it's about 15 people. And I'm in a dance class, North Indian Kathak dancing, which I kind of signed up for on a whim. Don't know anything about it, and I'm having a great time. I seriously don't know anything about it. I've never done anything like it. But that's also like 15 people. So I actually have a nice range of like large and small classes, and it's pretty cool. In the large classes, there are a lot of availability to like break up into study groups and TAs and tutor peer tutoring, and so uh, I have a great time with it. And then, um, Shauna, your classes this semester, how large? Okay, so I'm taking programming languages, which is, uh, I want to say about 75 people, but that said, I'm on first name terms with the person who teaches the class, which is true of pretty much every professor in the computer science department. Mm -hmm. I know all of them. I'm on a first name basis with every single one of them. I will walk into their offices and just talk about stuff, talk about life. So that's mm -hmm. a pretty awesome facet of the comp sci department here. Um, I'm taking linear algebra, which is about... Uh, I'm really bad at estimating how many people are in my classes. I want to say 30. It's pretty small. I also know my um, my professor personally in that. Um, I'm taking Concepts of the Cosmos, which is to fill a distribution science requirement because my computer science classes actually count for math distribution requirements. So I just got around to that a little bit later, um, which is a bigger class, but it's it's still it's not it's I want to say 100 less than that probably. And then. Probably one of my favorite classes I've ever taken at Tufts. I'm taking How Films Think with Lee Edelman, which is a very small class. There's about 16 people in the class. It's a <coughs> seminar class, um, and it's it's incredible. It's amazing. I walk out of the class and just my brain is exploding in the best possible way. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm also taking a yoga class, and I don't know how many people are in that. I think it's 25, something around there. So. 
Yeah. Shauna, Shauna reminded me also that even in my 200-person psych class, Professor Summers holds coffee hours almost every week where you get to sit down with, like, three other students and just talk with him about anything for about an hour or so. Like, he knows my name. Um, he knows actually almost everyone's name. And, um, and then our last question before we wrap up our, our first and the series of uh, these conversations that we're having together, uh, who is your favorite professor on campus and why? Whoa. That is such a hard question. Very hard. I have to pick one. Hmm. You can, I guess you can pick more than one, but you only have to tell me why for one. Okay. I'll go so first. I'll go first. I don't want to have to choose, but, well, I've already spoken highly about <clears throat> uh, Professor Summers, so I'll talk about my philosophy professor, uh, David Denby. He is a British guy and just such a goofball. Um, all his, almost every slide of his lectures end with questions, comments, Anyone want to, and like, he just gives a bizarre option every time. He's a lot of fun. Uh, one time I found the perfect opportunity to make a Monty Python reference to him, and he started giggling, <laughs> which was a really funny moment. But he's just a really friendly guy and like very happy to be teaching. Um, I don't know. I'd say one of my favorite professors is that, like, my, my, I guess my advisor, and I, she's my, like, the person whose lab I work in, and she's my advisor, and, um, she's just great. I can approach her about any problem. I can talk to her about my, like, my life. Her name's, um, her name is Professor Mary, Mary Jane Schultz, and she is awesome. And, like, she, I haven't actually taken any classes from her, but, like, <laughs> I was, we were having a group meeting, and we were having a group meeting, and, the, uh, like a couple weeks ago, and sh and with the undergrads who work on this project, and we were she was just talking, and she's like, "Yeah, you guys really don't understand about how these oxide mechanisms work, do you?" And we we're all like, "No, we don't. We don't really totally get it." She's like, "Well, what if we like had some seminars on it next semester?" And we're like, "Oh, that'd be cool." And she's like, "Oh, wait, some of you guys might have lab. What if I just taught a class about it?" We we're like, "That'd be so cool," and it would like count for our major. So she's like, putting together a class just for us. So we really understand what we're doing in the lab because she really cares that we know why everything works and we understand how what we're doing applies to the greater, like the greater field and to, you know, what we do day to day versus what everyone is doing across the world on this project. So it's really cool. Um, I, I'd say she's one of my favorite professors here. This is still a really hard question, but uh, I'm also going to go with my advisor, who's actually Ben Hescott, who I mentioned before in the computer science department, um, who I took intro computer science with and ended up asking to be my advisor after that. Um, he, his enthusiasm is just insane. I mean, when I was abroad last semester, I Skyped with him to talk about classes for this semester, and I was excited about it all day. I was just like, I'm Skyping with Ben today. I'm so excited about it. Um, and people were like, why are you so excited to Skype with this professor at your school at home? But, I mean, he just loves all of his students so much and really just wants all of them to succeed and is just a really, really awesome person. So, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Um, so this was, I, I, I had fun. Um, so I know, Jordan, you gotta, you got to get out and uh, get to a class. Um, I, just one last time, your name, your class year, where you're from, so that people know who you are again. And thanks again, everybody. Yeah, totally. So I'm Jordan, Jordan Metz. I'm a sophomore. I'm from outside of Philadelphia. I'm majoring in chemistry, and I'm chilling right outside the, our lovely campus center. <laughs> I'm Jordan Abosh. I'm a freshman from Deerfield, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago, and I'm studying psychology and philosophy and chilling in my dorm. Um, I'm Shauna Friedman. I'm a junior studying computer science and minoring in film. And I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I am sitting in my off-campus house. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.